Ladies and gentlemen, let's go to the graphics. Once again, he he plagues us with his presence. Former CIA covert operations officer, CEO of the Portman Square Group, global intelligence firm, host of season two and one and upcoming three, Black Files Declassified, Discovery Science Channel. You can find it all on Discovery Plus. Author of Company Rules, everything I know about business I learned from the CIA. Baker, you'll be happy to know that's about the 15th time we've already mentioned that book. As we open the show, there he is, one of his... Oh, boy, your locations get more and more puzzling. <laughs> Why Jesus are you casing Christ, out of Walmart? Uh, it's, not a, it's not a Walmart in sight here. Uh, and it's also, it's, look at this, I just realized, I looked in the camera, it's kind of like Hill Street Blues. Remember the old handheld camera? It's like Oh, yeah. yeah. Very yeah, gritty. Yeah, there's some action coming up there. This is NYPD Blue. It's a, uh, we're, uh, we're drawing a chalk outline uh, on the sidewalk just outside the truck. No. Well, this is very appropriate because Nancy Ronaldman was on yesterday, and she said that the Walmarts in Portland are having that ap um, epidemic of people stealing the grocery carts. There's no more left. So are you casing the place for grocery cart thieves? Yeah, that's, a, that's our big revenue uh, stream right now uh, for <laughs> group is uh is is, is investigating tracking down uh shopping cart thieves <laughs> you know what by god if you don't stop it in its tracks who knows what the fuck's gonna happen next well, how... I just got consequences for action that's all i'm saying look at the, the shakiness of my camera it's about like there's a murder about to happen any okay second. so just from what i've seen here I'm going to say we're in some small. That you're in Main Street of a small town. I'm going to say it's like in a in a in a flyover state. No offense to them, but because <laughs> I'm not seeing really any tall buildings. Okay, I'm going to go with like a North Dakota. Also, I'm going to say we're very close to an airport because of the shaking. There's a lot <laughs> of taking off of planes. Um, I am seeing a whole bunch of trucks. So, yes, again, this is like a blue collar area. Mm. Yeah, you know what? You're not. You're actually that. Gosh, damn it. See, you should be uh, doing like an investigative show, right? You should be should be doing a true crime podcast. At some point. She is pretty good. But again, she's had a lot of fucking uh, practice. We yeah. can hear you, by the way, but we can see the we can still hear you. But oh, we suddenly can't see his background anymore. I wonder yeah, why. Nailed it. Oh, you know what? I'm getting enough. I, 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 I didn't know how to change it. There, there we go. Is. That's better. Yeah. I, I, another call was coming in. Apparently, another shopping cart's been boosted. <laughs> <laughs> it would be so great if, like, you go, oh, sorry, guys, hold on, and the ca camera kind of goes down a little bit, and we just see you running in the background <laughs> right after a guy with a cart, and he's, like, running after it. <laughs> Very cops. It would be awesome. That would be great. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, so uh, so there you have it. It's, uh, yeah, but but uh, Joe is, 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 in fact, it's a small town. Um so it's yeah. your town, is it not? Are you in Idaho? I can't tell. I can't tell you. We're on a casing job right now. We're on a job. Yeah. I love it. And yet I want to know more. Uh, two brothers who <laughs> robbed a jewelry store in England and arrested after police spotted the faces of the subjects in the trunk of their car. George, That's where they lost me. <laughs> George Murphy Bristow, 38, and Benjamin Murphy, 37, wore masks that made them look like old men. Love it. They robbed the store in Epic Essex in September of 2021. Weeks later, police in another part of the county stopped a vehicle driven by Murphy and found two full face masks and clothing of identical appearance as those worn by the suspects in the robbery, along with a bag containing a hatchet, knife, and cable ties. That could mean anything. They used Used the weapons and cable ties in the robbery. Look at the mask. One worker had their $18,000 Rolex watch stolen from their wrist after they were tied to a chair. DNA from the men was found in the extremely lifelike full face latex masks recovered from the car. Oh, wow. I'm still not seeing how they draw the, the, the connections there. I'm still not seeing. <laughs> um, <laughs> they've been sentenced to each of them to over 10 years in prison for this. Men. Yeah. What came first, do you think? The masks or the idea to rob? Yeah, that's a you know, question. Uh, no, it's not. They, prob they, they probably saw them. Uh, this is my supposition, speculation that we'd have to clear up during the, uh, during the trial. But I suspect they might have walked into a store, a party store, much like Ricky's, 
and um, saw the masks and thought to themselves, you know, <laughs> go on, fly me, Gov. We've been looking to knock over a bank for some time. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you used to live there? That sounded like Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> Why me? By Dick Van Dyke. And uh, and then they decided, based on that uh, brilliant uh, epiphany, that they would they would uh, go ahead and inject the bank. So or the jewelry store, or whatever it was that they 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 robbed. Um, well, the, yeah. The reason I got it was because you yourself have had some experience with those famous CIA. Mission Impossible esque masks. I would assume there's a couple of rules of thumb when you're, to use your acting terms, you know, getting into character or deciding on the character. One being that, like, you're gonna want a mask that sort of relatively jibes with your age. Maybe not. No. Uh, your no. overall <laughs> brow, all that stuff, right? No, not at all. Not at all. What do you want? The, you want the mask so that you can operate and blend into the environment, right? Mm. That. That's the point of the exercise. So, you know, if you're if if, if we're doing an operation in a in a uh, assisted living facility, then yeah, we don't we want the, the masks to be all, you know, all, that's I, we never actually did an operation in an assisted living facility. But I just raise that as a point. I love uh, that. Trading in the Middle East, then we want the mask to blend in there. If it's, so, it, it's not like the mask has to look like the person wearing the mask. Quite the contrary. Oh, contrary. Uh, so. That's yeah. That's that's the uh, story. But nobody has a better disguise department um, in the world of, of intelligence and espionage than the the agency. They've got the absolute best. I love it. Oh, um, that's my favorite parts. Amazing people that work there. Uh, mm. So this guy is. You know, we've talked in the past about better the devil. You know, like if Putin were overthrown, could there possibly? be someone worse than Putin waiting to take over. This guy is a good nominee for that. Uh, if it is possible to be more of a loathsome, despicable human being than our own Vladimir Putin, it might be him. Not necessarily a good thing should he himself uh, become in charge. But yeah, he's the one that was first getting all of the crooks out of prison. They go into the front lines before the more highly trained soldiers do. You know, they can pl they can go on and to earn their freedom, but most of them do, of course, not make it out alive within the first couple of weeks of doing whatever they're doing in Ukraine. Uh, he is uh, was originally a criminal. Um, he's now a billionaire businessman. It started off as uh, hot dog carts. Uh, from your, I mean, and again, these are just like these private. It's almost like the what do you, what what's our security equivalent? BlackRock or something like that, but in a bigger scale. What do you Black make of the? Hey, wait. BlackRock is a BlackRock. I have to co correct the record. BlackRock is a very reputable uh, investment firm. Um, Which and, is the and, private army. I mean, not yeah. all private armies are bad, but this guy <laughs> seems to be bad. <laughs> <laughs> you're thinking of you're thinking of uh, what's his name, uh, Eric. Uh, I'm having a, a brain cramp right Me now. Me too. <laughs> what you do you, what do you, what what is your recon on this guy? I'm sorry. What is what is your take on this guy? I I, I mean, what, uh, there's a there's a lot going on with him, and also to the point where he could quietly be a threat to Putin. Yeah, Eric Prince. I was thinking of uh, Betsy Boss's uh, brother. Oh yeah. Uh, so um, yeah, no, he's not. There's no chance in hell this guy would ever, you know, climb the political ranks and get to any position of importance. He's he's uh, he's gotten a little bit sideways with Putin, and Putin's the guy who gave him all his money. The reason why he's got a lot of money is is because of his relationship, you know, with Putin. Um, Putin's found him to be a useful idiot uh, as far as right. a, a, a proxy army. Over the years, you know, they've been everywhere from the Middle East to Chechnya to elsewhere. And, and so, you know, but now, you know, Prigozhin is it, doing what a lot of these guys do, starting to imagine himself to be a little more powerful than he is. So, you know, if he doesn't, you know, crawl back into his little sandbox and, and play the game that, you know, uh, Putin and his thugs want him to play, then he'll get a rocket up his ass. Uh, but, yeah, the Wagner Group is, is uh, they've been around for quite a while. And they, uh, you know, they, they've got a reputation for, uh, you know, not being particularly well disciplined, bit more brutish than anything else. Right. Uh, and but it's a it's been a useful tool, for Putin, for a period of time. But, you know, trust me, Wagner doesn't have the, 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 the juice to, uh, to rise through the political ranks. He's got he's got too many enemies for that. In, well, interesting. See, I love this stuff like this. Well, I'll tell you what.
this guy's right out of central casting as far as Cold War films are concerned. You guys, we have a quick video of him. Blackwater, thank you. Okay. Got it, Eric Prince. Thank you. Uh, and, like, so we've got... The, it should be the first video on there. Uh, it, this is his... Um, he's sending a... Russian military soldiers send a surprising message to the Wagner group. CNN obtained this. While Wagner boss Yevgeny Prigozhin is recruiting even more people in an ad with a top Look Russian him. propagandist. Sign up for PMC Wagner, he says. You'll learn a man's work and will be in good shape for the upcoming World War III. While Prigozhin claims awesome. he's gearing up for World War III. Oh, God. Ah! Yeah, look, I mean, the bottom line is, look, if some drone was able to, uh, you know, figure out, you know, his specific location, he likes to wander up to the to the so-called front on occasion and, and you know, put on a helmet and, and big boy pants and, and act <laughs> like a tough guy. Um, but, uh, you know, he's, he, again, he's gotten where he is because he's played a political game in, in a sense, right? He's, he, he's cozied up and, and been useful to people who could then, you know, make sure that he, he you know, gets rewarded. So uh, I think he's, he's, uh, yeah, he's probably not long for this, this planet. Boy, I hope you're right. I have to tell you, though, it is a very disconcerting when the head of the private military group that, as we've seen, is far better and more capable than the actual Russian army, they're actually looking forward to World War III. That's not yeah. a fun thing to see. Yeah. We have to be very we have to be very careful about about how we how we portray what's happening right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, in in in, in there. I mean, yes. They're, they're, I mean, they're, look, they're, they're, the Russians have proven themselves. The military has proven themselves to have all sorts of of problems and lack of discipline and comms and logistics and and command and control and and hardware and and morale and and, and all those things. But you, you you've also got to keep in mind their ability to suffer. Yeah. And, so this thing can drag on for a very long time, and yeah. Putin's showing a willingness to make it drag on for a very long time. So we have to be pragmatic. We have to we have to understand that this is not something where, you know, uh, okay, if they can withstand this push in Bakhmut, then you know the Ukrainians can mount a counteroffensive and they can win. And and you know we all we get very excited about that prospect because the Ukrainians have done so much better than you know anyone anticipated. But we also have to understand just how difficult this is. And what a war of attrition could mean in terms of their abilities and also our abilities to resupply them, right? I mean, look what happened to, you know, the, the EU is running out of shells, right? The, the, basically, the Ukrainian military is using shells faster than the EU can manufacture them. So we, I'm just, I, I, all I'm saying is, look, you know, Putin and, and, and all his thugs, you know, do deserve a, a rocket up the ass. But, um, but we also have to be realistic about what this means and what it's going to take and how long it's going to go for, um, you know, and in, in, in light of, you know, what we've seen so far. You know, we, we got we to separate the emotion and what we'd love to see happen, what we hope would happen from the reality on the ground and what that means in terms of us having a strategy. And right now, I don't think Biden's got a strategy. He gets out there and says, we'll be there with you as for as long as it takes. That's a soundbite. That's not a plan or a strategic, you know, uh, battle plan. Yeah. Um, the... Uh yeah, it's uh, the, the whole thing is getting very depressing. Uh, well